Hey guys, good afternoon, almost good evening, because it's like 4.45 right now. It's a Sunday, and if you read the title, I'm getting ready for a dance competition, you might be like, why are you getting ready at 5 p.m. on a Sunday? Well, <laughs> let me tell you. Basically, this competition, I did all my group dances yesterday. It was wild, it was like back to back. We had like three numbers in between each dance, and we were just go, go, go all day. But today is senior solos. So originally my solo was scheduled to compete at like 9.30, and then I get a text like, hey, we're running early, so like come like a half an hour before your call time. So I was like, okay, great, I'll get there at 7.30. And then they're like, hey, a bunch of solos just got pulled, so come even earlier. So I'm gonna get there at seven, and I'll hopefully we'll compete by like eight, and then maybe awards will be at like 9.30, and then I can come home and be home by like 10.30 because I have school tomorrow, and that would really suck if I was home at like midnight, like I was supposed to be originally. But I'm just gonna do full hair and makeup because normally I would do makeup and then finish my hair at the competition, but if we are running super early, I just wanna be ready. Um, so let me get all of my hair and makeup stuff and then we'll get started. But this is the current setup. So makeup bag is right here, brushes and wipes, and then I lay out an old towel. This is like stains from bleach because this towel has gotten very messy. Um, but I like to do my makeup on this just in case I spill stuff so that I don't have to wipe it off of like the wood part. And then I went ahead and wet my beauty blender already, so we're all set up and I'm gonna get started. Okay, first things first, I prime my face. Hold on. So I used to not do this and then after a while I realized that it was actually helpful because for a while I thought like, oh, primer's probably useless, but it actually does something. This is the e.l.f. primer, it's the blemish control one. So it's just like a regular primer, but it has salicylic acid in it which helps it um clear breakouts not necessarily clear breakouts but prevent new ones from happening um because i have very like acne prone skin it runs in my family so i like using this to kind of give me a smooth surface and make my makeup last through like all the sweat and like whatever and then also to help keep my face from breaking out i'm gonna start with foundation so I use the Maybelline Fit Me, is this the Fit Me? Yeah, foundation, because um, it's super cheap and it works for what I need. I mix this with my moisturizer to make it not as thick, which I also need to go grab my moisturizer, so I'll be right back. I use the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel um, Moisturizer. What I do is I mix this on the back of my hand and I just pour not too much. Okay, well that was kind of a lot. And then I take like, a little bit less than the amount of foundation. I take a little bit less of the moisturizer and I just mix them together. And this helps thin it out and also my skin gets pretty dry. So this helps it stay moisturized throughout the day and so that I don't look all like dry and like flaky because obviously that's not good. <laughs> um, it's still pretty tinted, which is good. You can literally see my fake eyelashes in the mirror, but it's not as intense, which I like because I hate when it's a lot. So I put this on my cheeks and then I skip my forehead because my forehead is pretty even as it is and I don't really feel the need to put it everywhere. So I'm just gonna blend this in. A lot of blending. I also blend it onto my ears because nobody likes when you are two different shades, and then blend it down your neck too. Next up is concealer. I use the Tarte Creaseless Concealer, but I just put a little underneath my eye, and then kind of up following the natural, like, curve your eyes to like bring it up. And then same thing, I just blend this out. And then I kind of use this as like a eyeshadow primer too, so I'll literally take the whole flat end of the beauty blender and just like stamp it onto my eyelid. Um, so it has a nice even surface for eyeshadow. Okay, work. Now that I look lifeless and actually like a zombie, um, we know that my base is done. Next step is gonna be Blush. Actually, I'll set this first because I want to put my blush over top. This powder is from Cover FX. Got it at like TJ Maxx. Gonna put this everywhere. And then I'll put a little bit over where I put foundation. Literally just brush it everywhere. Next thing is blush. I use the Milk Makeup Blush Stick. I got this a while ago. It's low-key probably expired, but 
we don't need to talk about it. It does the job. This is so awkward to do on camera, but you just kind of have to smile to see where your like cheeks actually are. And then I bring it up to my temples and then other side. The one thing about stage makeup is that kind of if it's a mess, it doesn't matter because first of all, you're going to be far away from the audience when you're on the stage. And second of all, the lights wash you out anyway. So if you put on like too much blush or too much foundation or something's not your exact color, like you're going to look a little bit paler and like less dimensional on stage. So you can kind of like go ham. Let's do my eyebrows. So I've been using this. I use this literally every single day of my entire life. It is the Benefit 24 hour brow setter. This is so good. It's just a regular eyebrow gel. I also need to get my eyebrows done though, but I didn't because I knew I had competition and I wouldn't have time. Um, but they're kind of really thick right now, so it's a little bit harder to get them to stay in place. That's it for brows. Now we're going to move on to eyes. So I like brown eyeshadow the most because I just think it looks the prettiest. And the other option would be like silver, but for my costume, I just like brown eyeshadow because it's just like more neutral and I just think it looks better on me. I use the Going Coconuts palette from ColourPop. This one of my friends gave me for my birthday like a year or two ago. But the first shade I use is Lovely Bunch. <laughs> it's this color. Um, it's like a lighter brown and I kind of use this as like a base so that I can start building up on top of it. Um, and my motto with eyeshadow is if it's there, it's good enough. So as long as I get it on my face, that's fine. Now I'm gonna go in with the shade Nutty. And this is like a darker brown, it's this one right here. And this I just put on my lid because that's where I want to have like the most depth in my eye. So that you can actually like see that I have eyes. Okay, great. We're gonna move on to the last shade and that is Coolada. It's this one right here. So this is like an in-between shade and I Learned from my Nana when she used to do my makeup for dance recitals when I was like six years old that she likes to bring the eyeshadow all the way up to your eyelid, I mean to your eyebrow. So I use this shade and kind of just put it up at the top so that my eye looks even bigger. Yay! <laughs> the only difference is my eyeshadow back then used to be blue. So, you know, you'd have blue eyeshadow up to your eyelids, but it's okay because I was like six years old, so it was cute. But if I did that now, that would be a little bit drag queen vibes. Last step for eyes, or second to last step, is mascara. Okay, so I just went ahead and curled my eyelashes. My personal thoughts, I have a lot of opinions, if you couldn't tell. My personal thoughts are that, once again, if your makeup kind of looks a mess, mascara will save everything because it just kind of covers up your eye and then you don't look so like bald anymore. Like do you ever not wear mascara or like curl your eyelashes and you feel kind of like naked? It's the same thing when you're wearing competition makeup. Like you could literally have a full base and look flawless, but if I don't have mascara on, like you just look naked and <laughs> incomplete. Okay, there's the eyelashes. I feel almost complete. I'm gonna do my lipstick a little bit later just cause it's gonna wear off by the time I get there. So I but thought I'd show the aftermath cause it's kind of a mess, but to be honest, this will take me like two seconds to put away. But I'm gonna do my hair first before I put this away because then I won't have to dig around in my makeup bag. I'm just gonna do middle part low bun because it just keeps it simple and it's easy to do and I don't have to think too much about it. My hair is currently straight and it's so flat at the top because it was pulled back and slicked back all day. It's also kind of crunchy, which is really gross, but I'm gonna wash it tonight, so it's not gonna be gross for too long. And now I'm gonna pull it into a low ponytail with some hairspray so that I can start making the actual bun. All of my hairpins were on this earlier, but they kind of all fell into the bag, so I'm gonna have to go digging for them. But here's my hairspray. She's almost empty, which is very sad. <laughs> I'm gonna need to buy a new one for recital because that would suck if I ran out. I just kind of hold my hair into like a ponytail and then go ahead and just spray everywhere. And then smooth it out with my hands. And then I take my brush and brush like a little bit up because I don't want the bun to be too low that like if I 
tilt my head back, it's gonna hit like my neck. Right, now I'm gonna add a little bit more hairspray, especially along like my hairline, cause it kind of gets frizzy when I pull it back into a ponytail. Okay, so now we start the actual bun making process, which I'm going to hopefully show you a little bit of. So here's the ponytail. I split the ponytail into two sections. And then take one section and start twisting it. And twist it pretty tight. And then you want to start wrapping it around the ponytail. And then instead of taking another hair tie, start taking bobby pins and pinning all around the bun. And just pin it up. So now I'm going to take this ponytail section and do the same thing, just sort of wrap it this way, but nice and twisted. That's that. Let me grab a hairnet and then we're almost done. Now we're going to work on just making sure it's super duper slicked and then I'll probably put more pins in when I get to competition because I have like extreme perfectionism when it comes to my hair and I don't want it to fall out. If you take a toothbrush, definitely not one you're going to use. You can use this to get the really, really tiny, wispy baby hairs nice and slicked. Um, instead of using your hands, because sometimes your hands won't get it as nice and slick as you want. There's no such thing as too much hairspray. I think it doesn't exist. This is a finished look. You want to look like an egg. You want to look bald. You want to look non-existent. I'm done. I'm gonna go grab my costume um, and then I'm going to put away all the stuff that I have out because there's quite a bit of it, but I'll see you in a minute. All right, this is the finished fit. I put on my team jacket, wearing the same Align tank and then I put on some sweats and some socks. I put in my competition earrings. They're like these massive fake diamonds. The time is 5.48 and I'm supposed to be leaving at six. So my bag is packed. This is my makeup bag that has all the stuff I just used and plus some random stuff. I have all my shoes even though I'm not wearing any of them, but this is just the bag I bring to dance normally, so I just didn't want to unpack it. I'm done. I'm excited. Last time competing my solo ever, which is kind of sad because I feel like I just started learning it like yesterday, but I started learning in like November. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you guys sometime soon. Bye!